Hey, good morning. Today I want to talk about tips for rucking, marching, humping, whatever, whatever you want to call it. They're all basically interchangeable. Moving with weight on your back, let's call it that. So no one gets upset. Now, I'm not a grunt, that's very obvious, but I've been with grunt units enough to pick up on some of the stuff that they do in preparation for hikes, um, during a hike, after a hike, to maximize the benefits and to maximize performance. We're just gonna start from the bottom up. Your feet, you have to take care of your feet. You have to try to keep your feet dry. And if that means you gotta take a pair of socks with you to change out, you know, halfway through, or after you go through a puddle or something, so be it. But wet feet are going to get eaten up by the friction way worse than dry feet. Get good socks that don't slip and slide. Some people wear two pairs of socks. Um, if you know where your hot spots are, where you're prone for blistering, prone to blistering, you can use moleskin or band-aids or gauze wrap and put it on that those spots. But your best thing to do for your feet is good, good socks and footwear and just getting out there and moving with the weight because it's gonna toughen the soles of your feet up, the balls of your feet, your heels. It's gonna get that skin really thick. It's not gonna be pretty, but it'll be able to withstand a lot more if you thicken that skin up. Moving up into the legs, you wanna make sure that you're doing strength training on the legs and using running or walking or other forms of cardio to build strength and endurance in your legs. But really, nothing's gonna quite match just throwing on a pack and getting out there and running or, or uh, walking with the weight uh, to make you better at moving with weight. It's really important to Give yourself time to recover, especially after a ruck, because that's really hard on the joints. Make sure you're taking care of those. Make sure you're stretching after. Make sure you're warming up before. Make sure your mobility is on point and you're doing mobility training every day. I say that a lot, but it has saved me a lot of pain and probably kept me from getting injured lots and lots of times. Next is your lungs and your heart. Those can be improved through cardiovascular training. You can do low intensity, steady state cardio. You can do HIIT training. But when you think about what a hike is, it's steady state cardio, fairly low heart rate over a long period of time, sometimes more than an hour. So increasing your aerobic capacity, your VO2 max, all those things are gonna help when it comes to hiking. And it's just good for overall health. Moving all the way to the top, Mindset, when you're hiking, when you're rucking, when you're not the one setting the pace, like I am right now, and you know, in a military formation, it's not fun, especially when you're in the back and people are running to catch up and then stopping because it, it got all bunched up. It's just like traffic on the highway. Things get spread out and you're moving fine. You're gliding along at your own you know, speed. And then when things bunch up, you have to stop. So it's a stop and go, especially when you're in the back. And it's easy to get discouraged and annoyed and frustrated. It's the nature of the beast in unit hikes. Just be okay with it because it's gonna happen. We almost make jokes out of it at this point. When you reach a certain level and you've done enough hikes and you've been in the back for a lot of them, you understand that it's just gonna slinky. We call it the slinky or the accordion. It's gonna happen. You're gonna be doing a, a walk run, basically the entire hike. Consider it good training. Be the positive person in that formation. At boot camp, you're not really allowed to talk during hikes, I don't think, but when you're in your unit and you're going on hikes and people are grumping and they're upset and they're, they're bitching, just be that, be that positive person who's distracting people. I like to do Would You Rather, or if you had one movie that you could watch for the rest of your, your life, what would it be? And I try to get people's mind off of the pain and off of the frustration of doing the slinky um, <clears throat> and get them thinking about other things. And usually it works, 
not all the time. <laughs> Some people are really stubborn and they wanna, they wanna feel the pain, but usually it works. You gotta eat right, have good nutrition, have good uh, hydration, get a lot of salt and water in you before the hike, bring water with you on the hike. And what I like to bring on hikes as a nice morale booster is any kind of sour gummy candy because it's quick carbohydrates, it's fun, it's like, it's a, a strong flavor, so it can distract you from, oh my, my calves cramping up. All right, well, I'll pop this sour thing in here, and for the next 30 seconds, it'll just be pure joy. Pure childhood nostalgia as I munch on a Sour Patch Kid. I think I'm gonna do a separate video on how I pack my pack. It's it's gonna vary widely depending on if you're in control of that or not. A lot of the times the units will give you a packing list and you have to pack those things on the packing list. But how you pack them is going to massively impact the way the pack feels on your back, how easy it is to carry. Basic rules to follow are you want the heavier things higher on your back and you want them close to your back. So you don't want them far away because the further away they are from your back, the more the pack's gonna pull back and that's just gonna make the whole hike miserable. You want everything tight. So use the cinch straps on your pack if you have them and cinch them bitches down. Keep it nice and tight so stuff's not shifting around the whole time you're hiking. I'm 100% gonna get a tick. But I get to go up that now. So once I catch my breath, I'll be back. Oh, I made it. Oh, who put that there? Another thing you wanna keep in mind when you're training is that typically the pace that you wanna shoot for is a four mile per hour pace or a 15 minute mile or faster. So that's like the slowest you wanna be going. I'm not going that fast right now because I'm trying to talk and not have you guys listen to me panting for breath, but four minutes or four miles per hour, 15 minute miles or faster. Some people have to do a little bit of a shuffle. My advice is if you have hills, um, jog the downhills, jog the flats, jog the downhills if it's safe, jog the flat areas, you know, little, do a little shuffle. It looks kind of like this. So you're not impacting hard. You're basically just shifting from one foot to the next really kind of quicker than a walk. That'll reduce blistering, but it's gonna, it's gonna make your legs more tired um, because they're not getting that little tiny break that you do when you're walking and you're transferring your weight. Your leg will kind of get a, a mini break, but it is easier on the pads of your feet for sure. Your paws, it's easier on your paws. So do that and then walk the uphills. You don't want to be trying to sprint up the hills and just smoking yourself. You have to conserve energy, especially, especially if you're going five, six plus miles. You don't want to be burnt out, you know, by mile two. So like this happy horse shit, I'm going to take my time going up. I'm going to walk briskly or do the little shuffle the rest of the time but I'm not gonna sprint up that thing unless the finish is at the top and I know for sure I'm done when I get up there that's the only it's the only way you're gonna get me running up that hill so those are my tips for people interested in the military or people already in the military wanting to get a little bit better at hiking start with low weight start with low you know short distances and build your way up little by little start you know don't injure yourself don't throw on 50 pounds and try to go 10 miles at your first rock be humble know your limits know your know yourself but you know safely push past them little by little not a lot if your limits here don't go blasting through it just go a little past it all right recover recover adapt and then your limit is now a little further down the line and you can push past that a little bit our bodies are not meant to go to extremes and not break so be careful be mindful listen to your body recover give yourself enough time between rucks to rest 
and adapt and get stronger. So hope you enjoyed that. If you guys are interested and this video gets enough uh, comments asking for it, I'll do a how to pack your ruck video. Um, maybe how to how to bandage up your, get off of me, get, spider. How to, uh, yeah, how to pack your ruck. I can do how to bandage up your feet. If you're gonna be doing like 10 plus miles and you wanna uh, ace bandage up your feet or moleskin or whatever, I can show you how to do that. I can show you what I eat before a ruck. Whatever you want, let me know.